Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. Today I'm getting the drill press ready to go because we're getting ready to start on the American Crane project once again. And uh, so we're clearing off the table, get our vise off of there, and we're going to get it prepped up so we can put the two masking halves. I believe that's what they're going to call those. You know, it's a it's a split drum, uh, so I, I believe they call them maskings. Um, and these cable maskings have got to be modified and we're going to be creating a standoff so that our sprocket and guard uh, standoff assembly will adapt to this. And uh, so we're getting ready to make that happen. So let's get going. Let's, uh, let's go take a walk out and actually look at the maskings. Well, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick wire wheel and uh, clean these surfaces up. We have uh, we have the support that we put in the center of the other the original masking set, and uh, this this holds the two halves perfectly in line. And then these two spreads right here represent the bolt hole pattern at the split line. So that's how we're able to keep this thing 100% concentric of this pattern here that we're going to be working with. And you got to excuse the background noise here because they're actually got uh, giant saws out there and they're going through the sidewalk all the way up and down uh, the highway here. Uh, I guess they're going to be laying in a gas main or so. They got uh, bridge construction down the road. In fact, Winkler came in. He was the one I did that uh, uh, boom uh, repair there. And the uh, spreading or adjustable pin there for where the thing swings around on the main mast and that locks into place. I, uh, I had to deburr a thread on for him this morning on that. And they're going to be starting on that construction as well. So um, I'm going to start having a little bit of these mishaps uh, come in and out from local work right, right on the road here. Um, anyhow, we've got the components here. We're going to get this cleaned up a little bit. We're going to get this in on the drill press. And we're going to be making modified slugs and we're going to be opening up these holes here to accept a standoff that's going to hold the sprockets and uh, the, the, the cable guard and everything else on the inside here. All right, uh, <clears throat> before we brought these in here, we went ahead and took a quick wire wheel, hit here, hit inside our radius and on the other side as well. And we're going to get these up onto the drill press here and so we can enlarge these holes right here for the pattern for the standoff slugs we're going to add. Now, one of the things I didn't have when I got this uh, drill press uh, was this hand crank right here. Now, I did <coughs> um, I save my uh, knee handle on my bridge port uh, when I replaced there. I had somebody come in and they had a half a dozen of them in a box, brand new, so I replaced the one on my, uh, my bridge port itself. This one here was missing a tooth right here, but I'm going to incorporate this handle into a socket type drive for this handle right or you know, this raising or lowering. Um, that's in the future. I just, I, uh, just haven't had a chance to do that. Um, but right now I just take a speed wrench. It's not too bad on the way down. But on the way up, it would be nice to have the other one with a little bit larger uh, crank on it. Now this uh, this tooth right here and the one next to it, I had to rebrace those. Those were missing; they were broke, and uh, I reshaped those in. Some of it with uh, a little bit of a gear cutter uh, in a diametrical pitch, and some of it I had to hand I had to hand shape. All right, now I went down and then just coming back up slightly to keep uh, keep the load and everything else on the on the forks on the lip there and uh, we're, uh, we're lower down enough to where we can go ahead and slap one of these up there All right, so we got the masking uh, up here, half of it anyway, and we've got our 
we can we can slip three of them in and either, either side that we want to do this but these two right here in relationship to the masking itself it just barely off to where these two can't comfortably slide in here and we found the same thing on our other half as well now we knew that these slid in all on our other one uh, our original one that we made the pattern from we put that together on the table and that worked fine what we're going to do is we've got our center jig here for the hub and to get these two webs to drop down in here because we had this setting up on uh, on parallels over in, in the other area there and we're we're getting down here and we're comfortable to swing underneath this edge or dovetail for the head here and we can stack all of these units up together and move this around so this is barely fitting in this 24 inch sibling here we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this up in the lathe with a steady rest and we're going to take two inches off the end this will drop down we'll get the other half in here we're going to put it together like it's supposed to be in an assembly and we're going to get the other two plates stacked up here so that we got the combination of the three plates all mounted up here on the top and we're going to come down and we're going to we're going to verify that these holes need to be modified to fit our jig or we're going to make them all uniform all right so let's go ahead and set this up in the lathe all right let's go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna wipe our waves right here where we put the steady wrap down on all right we're gonna just wipe a little bit of debris off of our last cut here and we always keep our ways nice and clean and even though you see me set things on my ways uh, I'm the one that puts them there I set them down gently I know the importance of them I don't I don't beat on my ways and I don't run anything filthy on my ways and I clean my ways if I happen to do any little bit of grinding or whatever with the braces and I cover everything when I turn cast iron so there's a lot of different things that you want to do to protect your ways this lathe is I've had ownership of this lathe for better than 15 years, um, actually since 94 I took ownership of this lathe and uh, I've had to do a few things to it and improve on it and also respect, I'm just kind of opening this up right now, alright got that diamond in there, now we're going to go ahead and we know that we're going to want the steady rest set in about right there. Now when I set on the set it rests, I wipe off the bottom of it and a light coat or white right there and I place it on here. And then we twist the foot around or the clamp and voila, we got it on there. Alright, now we can go ahead and set our piece right in here. And uh, just in case I moved it, I gotta verify that both of these are the same length there about three and a quarter three and a quarter okay so we're gonna we're gonna take two inches off of this Okay, we just put the bell center in the end here uh, just to make sure that we're holding it true and it does straighten it out a lot better. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring in and set our steady rest to the pipe in this location right here as soon as we tighten this up. Because we're going to have this bell center out of the way when we go to part this and we need to have this support here close.
Okay, now we've got all three of those tight. And we give ourselves a little space right here. And we want to go ahead and grab our parting tool. Alright, now the parting tool's got to be set square. We faced the end of this pipe back when we made this. So, just getting rid of a few tools here. Alright. All right, so we got uh, we got this flat surface right here, and we're gonna go ahead and bring in our parting tool, just like that. All right, we're square. We're gonna come in here, and we're gonna scale in two inches, just like that. you know back here about three inches and we got these you know you're gonna have the vibration and the singing so you just kind of go through as quick as you can be done with it all right we're gonna just go ahead and dress off the inside and outside little chamfer right here pretty smooth all right <clears throat> now we can go check our fit in there make sure that we're hitting those two webs in the right spot and then we know we're locating on the diameter there pretty good I think we got a little burr right there, but it's it's wanting to go right in there. I think it's just a little tight right up there. This one here like goes right in, but you force that one in, it's a little tight. We're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of a file right to that. Edge right there. We're going to go ahead and lift our other half up here. That looks pretty good. We're going to grab, we're going to grab our two different lengths there winches together all right I just hung this up on my hoist there just so I could get some cane stretched out here and uh, what we're going to be doing is putting our our come along here and then we're going to come this way here and we're going to go around and we want to clamp we want to clamp this together plates stacked together here just as they're going to be going only reverse they're going to be going on the inside here but the whole pattern is going to be matching 
And what we're trying to do is establish two matching hole patterns through the masking uh, with everything in place here. So, as soon as we get this slack out of here, Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to raise it up somewhat around the split line here and see if I can pull this up here. Alright, looks like we've had success. Alright, now we want to go ahead and we want to draw this in and we're going to make sure that these are staying in here. We can slide all these up and down. Alright, we're going to grab the hammer. So we got these that are loose. Alright, that's looking good. This looks like our kerf width of actually when we torch this across here. Um, this one looks a little tight here. Um, that one looks a little wider there. So we're going we're gonna to be playing around with those as well. And we might actually take some half or 5 8 rod and run it down through here. We want to really make sure that we're able to duplicate what this is supposed to be and that these holes will all go through and these maskings will mount on the bolt pattern on the crane. Okay, This masking is different than our other one but they both came off the same, pl uh, the same crane or the same vintage crane I should say. And um, we just want to really make sure that they uh, they are matching up. All right, we're going to go ahead and shock it a little bit here with a hammer. <clears throat> All right, I don't think we're going to get any tighter. Um, we're going to be satisfied with that grip around the drum. And how we're setting here, we are mating all the way around on our uh, diameters that this registers on. And uh, the plates are still nice and loose up here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut some 5 8 rod now. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and see if we can drive the 5 8 rod down in here. We're gonna tighten up these four bolts and then uh, run a reamer. So we make sure that all of these are exactly the same in. We really like to tighten that up if we can a little bit. Okay, what we're doing now is we're going ahead and these are some more of our three inch angles that we took out of the weld shop area there and we brought it in here and all we're kind of doing is clamping up so that we're holding one a pressure so that we our pins we took 5 8 pins and we got a little taper on there and we're wanting to go ahead and well that one slipped right into that one there um, but this one here we know that we just tightened up there okay I can feel it tapping on the bottom okay we're holding those two in there And those are tightened up a little bit. That that one's still loose right there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to go ahead and rotate this around like that. Now we can work here and there. All right, so we're going to get a little angle clamped into this spot here. Well, first off, let's, let's just see if we can get this drove down in here. And... Not quite. Actually, I can feel... I can just barely feel that one there. Alright, that one's loose, that one's loose, okay those are all loose right there, and these holes are lining up but just, 
just a tiny scotch. That one's loose right there. Let's just see if a bigger hammer don't make it go in there. Nope. Okay, now that one does. So there's enough spring in there to make that happen. Let's. All right, all four of those are tight, and the that one's loose. Okay, what I'm going to do now is with this under tension, I'm going to go get big clamps. Actually, what I'm going to do is, <laughs> I keep changing my mind here. You notice that? All right, these four are bolts, and if we tighten them, we sandwich these four right here, we'll be able to tap these four out here and run the reamer down through there. We know that we are, we're within, I don't know, 30 thousandths, total 15 a hole. Um, Hey, you know when I eyeball in there. All right, I think we got the right combination here. Now we're going to go ahead, and this was the one that was easy to slip out. We'll bring the bolt in from the bottom, and we got shorter ones because these these other ones here would we would have had to do too much. Let's go get a ratchet and a wrench. Alright. Alright, this is just barely in here. We get a plastic hammer and uh, tap it out. Okay, the reason why we put the flat washers there is because we got a countersink on this side, we got a countersink on this side here. Uh, this will be the one that will be taking over for this one uh, because we're going to be sandwiching these plates on the other side. And the hole we want to set up and make sure that we are reaming through so we're all matching before we open up the holes to the big size. We want to make sure that we're, we're all in sync with each hole. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead pull out the bolts on that other, the other side there and put them in just like this. Tap these out and run the reamer down through there so we can make all the holes match. Okay, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drive these 5 eighths pins right out. Okay, and now we're going to run down the 5 8 <coughs> reamer down the hole.
I make those sounds. <laughs> uh. spacing so that the sprocket sets inside this unit right here uh, you see this this three-quarter inch in here uh, it's about oh maybe 60,000 maybe a sixteenth of an inch wider than it really needs to be but we need to create this kind of clearance on the inside of this drum here so we're probably going to incorporate like a 5 8 standoff here uh, that this sprocket will actually meet that'll keep the teeth out away from it because uh, this this is flush with the side of the wall of the crane there so we can't have that chain ragging on the side there as well you know so we got uh, we got about three eighths here and we can probably get another quarter and we're going to trim the OD of this off all right what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to break this down now so that we can set up the individual halves one at a time in here and come down in and locate that hole and we're going to open that hole up to about an inch and a quarter that'll take care of the countersink that's on this side here uh, so that we have a straight through hole and then we're going to take a piece of material in the lathe there and we're going to turn out little standoffs and we're going to have eight of them uh, and then once we create those eight standoffs then we're going to go in the other room there and we're either going to weld or we're going to braze them in uh, because when we drill this material out we'll find out if it's cast steel or cast iron and if it's cast iron we're going to go ahead and braze them if it's cast steel we can go ahead and buzz a little weld on them All right, we just tried to take this gear because the gear is actually, or the sprocket is actually going to ride on this bottom side here. And we tried to slip it underneath there. And of course, this inside radius was made to turn for the other pair of laggings. This pair of laggings is about a half an inch larger on this cable wrap diameter than the original laggings we built these for. So. We're going to go ahead with our plan because we need to modify these laggings so that they'll take this bolt pattern. And then we're going to have to set up these um, the two sprockets, our, our six pieces. And we're going to have to cut out the center again uh, to accommodate for that diameter to slip in here. We're probably going to go ahead and we're going to cut all six of these in the plasma cam and uh, just to get it, get it done. We have located good hole patterns and the hole patterns themselves will be locating the sprockets and everything else in line uh, close enough for the operation and the tolerances that this needs to run in.
All right, a little bit of wires in here, but I think uh, we're just gonna we're gonna let them uh, handle taking that piece out. They torched off the remaining wires here when it pulled us out of the old crane. Now here's something I uh, this this table here is a replacement table for my sibling drill press, and the other one didn't have T-nut slots in it. It was exactly the same diameter, exactly the same girth almost the slotting hole pattern and everything else but it didn't have t-nut slots and I had a customer come in and they go I know where there's a faceplate exactly what like you need to and I said yeah 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 and um, <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I, it was the old old days there and and uh, and I just, you know, I just shined it on. I think, yeah, he's really going to come in here with exactly what I need. It was exactly what I needed. And anyhow, when I was going through this thing, and what it is, this is a faceplate off of a lathe. So I took a, a slug to resemble the straight shank portion that goes down into this lower section of the knee. And uh, threaded it for the spindle threads that this originally was designed to spin on the lathe and after I mounted the two together I went ahead and took set screws and I locked the two threads together Loctite set screws drilled on the split line and everything else it's never coming off of there anyhow that's how I got this uh, table on here and I have the T-nut slots while I was doing it I went ahead and made T-nuts. This is also a good project to do on a shaper. Uh, a long section and making T-nuts in the shaper is a pretty cool job. And then put them in the saw and saw them and then the, the mill or the drill press itself and drill and tap them. Uh, and you can make your own set of T-nuts. I made them with half inch and five eighths uh, because this can, this can handle both. And I bolt one section down with uh, my, like my, I, I bolt my my vise, uh, Palmer vise, I, I bolt that down with a 5 8 and uh, but you can you can use uh, your half inch hold down kit just like you do in the mill and all you really want to do is just get a good hold on this thing so that we can we can safely come up here and put some holes in here All right, that's all we need to really hold this thing down. It's not going to go anywhere. Now we we got full motion side to side and around to go ahead and locate our our holes up here. And we're going to squirt some lube on there. I think we're down in a new area, and uh, <laughs> it sure feels tight. Um, all right, we. Uh, we zeroed in with our three-quarter inch reamer sticking down in the hole and we could see the side that we were rubbing on and we kind of zeroed in on there. We're going to drill, this is one and three sixteenths. We measured the countersink on this side here and it, it's pretty close to one and a quarter. And this is one and three sixteenths and then after we go through with this bit here then we're going to put in the inch and a quarter reamer and we're going to go ahead and ream them so that all of them are going to have the same size bore that when we go into the lathe and we turn our slugs that are going to sit in here um, they will all match all right so and we got this down on a, we're in our back gear right now and um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to touch off of here and if it's a curly chip that comes out of here we well, you know it's going to be cast steel and if it's flakes and uh, they crumble uh, we know it's cast iron and then that'll kind of determine our uh, our welding. And also, too, uh, we are going to have to not only plasma cut the other rings to go on to this and have clearance on the inside. We're going to set up a hand-operated plasma cutting uh, because this will not fit into the plasma cutter for one. Um, but to s locate is we have to trim a little bit off of this outside here to have clearance for the chain on the other side of the sprocket. All right, here we go.
see a curl forming right here. Alright, and we can't snap that. It's pretty hot right now, but we can't snap it, so this is a good sign that this is cast steel and we'll be able to weld to it. Definitely is cast steel. Um, these are these chips are hanging in there pretty strong, and uh, and a nice gloss finish in here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, ream this out now. Nice hole, I like that. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and rotate this thing around and get to our next hole here. So we're gonna change this out to our three quarter inch reamer so we can line it up with the next hole. Excuse me, our five eighths reamer. The rotation of the whole knee is kind of a procedure. Now, on these old knees, you know, when you loosen this one up here, this board is pretty old, so the table would want to tilt, tilt down a little bit. Alright, now we want to go ahead and we bring out the weight on our hand. We got that adjusted so that we can, we can kind of do that cut traction. Okay, we're roughly in the ballpark right there. That's where we go ahead and we tighten up the knee here. Double check on the rotation, it looks good. We, we tighten that. Now, for the finesse to get this really in there, and we're kind of looking. We're just going to hit these center. We loosen these two right here. And we bring this down in here. And then we just take the hammer. We like a raw hammer so we don't cause any hammer dings. And I'm happy with that. So what we do is we tighten down these. And we double check. Yep, and we're still looking good in the center. Now we go ahead and we knock out. Ringer. And we put in our drill bit. We go ahead and come down here a little bit. I want to show you something here. Alright, there's a little better position. Alright, so basically you just saw me bring this down. Now, on, on the feed here for speeds, this little gearbox right here has got a little key on that shaft and there's a little dimple detents in on this here. This comes in and out on a gear pack that's back here. So it has an internal mechanism that lines up with each of those gears and that's what controls the, the speed. Now when you push this all the way in, it is neutral, okay? And then your first gear out, there, it locks in. There's low, okay? And that's what I happen to be drilling, but that's kind of a little explanation on uh, on your power feeds here. All right, so you bring this down and then you slide this on over here. And then it starts your worm and your feed. And then once all the backlash is all caught up, then your bit starts making contact with your part. You start getting a cut. And we're going slow enough and we're not creating enough heat to worry about putting oil on this because I'm going to be welding to this and I don't want to I don't want to have the oil liquid mess right now because I like to have a pretty sound weld 
on my connection here. 